Driver, start your engines! Welcome to Racing with Mason. In this series, you'll see yours truly me, Mason D, on location at the track, off the pace, and in the pack, behind the wheel, over the wall, in every race, I include y'all. You ready? Let's, Let's go! Racing with Mason, if you're looking for a real good time, Racing with Mason, we'll see you at the starting line, Racing with Mason, on the track or in the pits, Racing Mason Dixon! Yeah, buddy. Hey, y'all, this here's Racing Mason Dixon, and I tell you what, right off the get go, it's going to be awfully hard to top this experience as one of the most unique races in all the motorsports. You ever hear of a stacker car? Let's head on down to the asphalt to our on track correspondent. That'll be yours truly, me, Mason D. Let's go. Yeah, buddy, you're racing with Mason, and I am so excited. We here at the Kalamazoo Speedway, Kalamazoo, Michigan, for Red, White, and Boom, the Night of Destruction. These guys, I already know, just been here a little bit. We know we are in for quite a show tonight. You know when uh, gates open five, six hours before the uh, events start happening and people are already coming through the gates that this is going to be a good event. You know, for racing with Mason, I ain't just spectating. I ain't going to come to a track and just say, hey, we watched this race. No, I said uh, we gotta be involved and working and stuff. So, so I'm gonna be giving some of these fans uh, rides around the track in a school bus. And Gary just surprised me when I showed up today. He says that's your car right there. You're gonna be driving a stacker car, yeah, buddy. I'm excited about that. Good deal. No, don't. No, that's what it's all about here. You, you gotta. You're not gonna get a full effect of this deal unless you actually get out there and uh, play a little bit. So. These are some of the stacker cars that are going to be racing tonight, and I get to be in one of them. Now, I haven't met my co-pilot yet, so I do not know if I'm going to be up on top steering or on the bottom running the gas and brake, but either way, I am just so excited to be a part of it. Um, number one, it looks unique. You know, it's, it's unique. Somebody sees it, they don't have to watch racing. They, they look at it, and, and it, you know, it makes their mind pop a little bit to say, you know, what is going on here? And then when they get into it to see the poor soul that sits on the bottom um, doesn't have a steering wheel. They ain't even no steering wheel there. You see the linkage come down from the roof right in front of your belly right there. So that's kind of intimidating right there. Uh, so yeah, you cannot help steer the car or anything uh, on the bottom, but you run the gas and the brakes. Up on top, uh, as you see, it's just a body up there, a body and a seat and a steering wheel. And that steering wheel comes down running through. They welded together. They all look uh, pretty safe, although I imagine uh, the higher sensor gravity. Maybe since I'm, you know, usually the, the light one, you know, they always put me in the small areas and stuff. They'll probably throw me up on top, to keep it from being uh, less top heavy. Of course, you know, maybe maybe that's what we weigh, do a weigh in. Whoever weighs more gets the bottom. My first race that I have to be in, um, our car did, and I watched two cars in front of us, got up on two tires, you know, two wheels, but I think we were maybe just a little bit wiser than some of these guys now. So this right here is the stacker car combination uh, I get to be a part of. We got a Chevy Impala down here on the bottom, uh, and uh, up on top is a little Ford. I don't know, it's completely gutted. Y'all. Now, I ain't never seen the inside of a stacker car. I never seen one up close, just on online and stuff. What I found out is they just didn't leave the seat where it is, right? Uh, yeah, on the upper uh, the upper car right there. They put it all the way in the back seat. They put a racing seat up there because to get the steering wheel to be angled right and stuff, you got to get that as back as far as you can. So uh, so you don't even get the the confidence of driving like you would in a car. Like, oh, this is just driving a really tall monster car or something, just monster truck up being up tall and stuff. No, you driving from the back seat. It was actually a whole lot easier than what I expected. Um, I expected it to be quite the chore, cause like you said, the seat's back so far so that the, the shaft is able to come up at a nice angle, but. And in all truthfulness, when I first got into the car, I realized that, the, I mean, the steering wheel was already up to here. Oh yeah, and you're like, this really, I remember you telling me that, yeah. it's gonna be hard to steer this thing. Yeah. We could probably spend this whole episode talking about the engineering marvels of the stacker car, but friends, we come here to race. But first, how are you supposed to get in one of them there things? Watch this fella in front of us uh, try to get in the car. Uh, did you have any tr trouble getting up in, in, uh, in the car? 
Uh, no, not really. I climbed up the back. See, my, my door didn't open up. Oh, wow. I climbed up the back and crawled in through the back window. Luckily, I had uh, uh, put a couple of hours driving a bus, giving people rides uh, around the track. So I got a little bit of experience being on a track, but this is first time being in a car and yeah, not having any uh, anything to hold on to, just giving it some gas and brakes. So. The worst thing I feel was trying to figure out what to do with my hands. <laughs> uh, like I'm under in the bottom, like with my hands, like what am I supposed to do with them? And I tried sitting on them, I, and finally I just held out to the bar. I was like, "All right, let's go." And that was an odd experience. Yeah, I gotta have a, a handle or a, a wheel or something to hold on to because that that was rough. You know, that was rough not having any control of turning. I think they should probably like, you know, like on a like the roller coaster, at least on a roller coaster, you got that bar to hang on to. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't really s provide that much safety, but I mean, in your mind it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My stipulation is that Aaron was my uh, gas and brakes because I knew that uh, out of anybody else that he would want to send the thing as hard as I was about to. You realize they're both important jobs. Yeah. Gas braking and steering. It's like you can't do one yep. without the other. Honestly, I'm not very good with heights even though I work construction, but he, <laughs> he's like, I'll steer. I'm like, you bet, I'm, in, I'm on the bottom. Uh, watching the flag, man, it looks like he gets ready. There's the green flag, I take a jump, and uh, right away you decide to go to the outside. Yeah, I figured the outside would be the best part. What really bothered me was the fact that nobody seemed to know where to go. <laughs> I mean, we started out by going, you know, driving it like a normal track, going through one and then coming out of two. And then I believe we actually did a complete lap the first time. Yeah, I completely forgot that we was going through the infield at all. So, and I, obviously other drivers did too. Right out of the gate, I think he forgot we were supposed to go into the infield. Now right here, boom, we hit it. And see, I'll let one guy went yep, to the straight and we too. went through the infield. And then you got to roll it head on right there. <laughs> and he's got it pinned to the to the floor. And I'm like, there's no way we're going down in there right now. So we kind of went on by and went and sat up by the pit chute there and uh, waited for things to kind of situate. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are entertaining a full house here at Kalamazoo Speedway, making wide sweeping turns here. Yeah, we actually passed a couple people right there, didn't yeah, buddy. we? So I'm deciding we're going, but we'd already came See, this it way. seems we should have gone we there. We should have gone there. I saw that guy turn right. So, like I said, <laughs> I'm following the guy in front of me. As soon as those things came out on the track, we were like, yeah, we're, that, we're doing that. And, and, some, and we were kind of disappointed that they hadn't rolled any up until that point, you know, because as soon as you see that, you immediately think that's going to flip over. And and being that they hadn't flipped any up until that point, it was it was a goal. It was a goal to make sure it happened. <laughs> and that was, it was kind of the joke of the night was, you know, up until we actually got to start the stacker cars, was, we're going to roll that thing, you know. It was just kind of... Hey Tim, you ready to roll a stacker car today? And, you know, it was just a, a running joke that we were going to roll it. Well, when we got in it, we, were, we both kind of like, well, let's see how far this goes. And then uh, once we were actually going, the, the racer took over at me. I kind of had the thought process of, uh, boy, I hope these guys have the common sense that maybe I do, that they will back off a little bit when they start feeling the tip and let it settle back down and, and take off again. But I, but I kind of knew that wasn't going to happen. Uh, people are sh people are showboats. I, it was going well, but I knew we were gonna roll because I could feel that when we would turn left, the car just wanted to dip down and, and lift up on the inside. So it was inevitable. It was, and I mean, in all honesty, it was. I felt it, and I felt it go sideways. And my brain just didn't put the fact that you had another thousand pounds on top of you. And I, I know he's a wheel man, so I know like if I could put him in a situation, he's 
nine times out of ten gonna be able to wheel himself out of it. I think their minds are a little bit less and their guts are a little bit more and, um, and they're gonna go faster and pretty soon they're gonna start tipping over. So Came out of four a little, well, a lot too hot and he like, you know what? And he threw it in there and <laughs> Well, we weren't able to really stick. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was doing it, but I was really trying to get that thing to lay up against the wall and kind of make it just a more gradual entry down in there so was it so so sharp. I mean, as fun as it was, and as much as I laugh about it now, that it was hard hit. It was a hard hit, and it was kind of scary. I mean, once you start tipping, you don't. And where we tipped it at was the scariest part, because it was right there at the wall, right by the wall. And when we were coming down, that was the only thing in my mind was, oh, sh there's a wall there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here we come. Turn, turn four, and. Yep. Oh, yellow. Yellow just yeah, went just, on, yeah, and they oh, just yeah. tipped. They just yeah. tipped it. Look, you could. Oh, geez, we had the loader coming out. They given us the thumbs up. Uh, so <laughs> that's uh, uh, Tim on the top, and he just gave the thumbs up. But as we do this. Um, I realized we're right in the way where the ambulances, the emergency crews are, so I start pulling away and you're banging your foot, you know, going stop, stop, and I'm thinking we gotta get out of the way. So just like that no communication between us. The first thought in my head when we did lay over was like, oh, is Tim okay? Like that was my first thing. I'm stacking the roof of the car on the bottom, like, are you good? And once I finally heard him say he was good. They're all worried about me in the bottom. I'm like, I don't care. I'm more worried about him up there. So, I uh, I think it shocked me more than anything. Once we finally landed, I was that it was it was pretty pretty violent landing to be honest with you. Being up that that extra distance and you're not just like tipping a car up on the side. I mean, you are slamming a 2,000 pound car onto the concrete on the side on its side. And um, there's a little bit of roll bar in the top car and I actually had a, a, a center bar here that went from door to door that held the steering shaft and it ended up being about right here at the, the shin so when we did go over it I, I, I smashed my legs on that thing pretty well I, I had quite the knot and uh, busted up leg for about two weeks uh, that's what let me know I'm getting kind of old for these things. <laughs> we had a red flag condition out on the track while the emergency personnel helped get Tim and Aaron out of their jacked up car. Now they sent us to park out on a backstretch while they cleaned up the track. Or so I thought. But no, the track workers decided it'd be fun to leave their car laying there right where it was and give us another obstacle to have to maneuver around. Hey, there's the tipped over yep. car. So we gotta be careful uh, staying out of its way. That made things a little bit tighter coming coming through there. But this is real fun where we really got to open it up here uh, coming backwards. Yeah, we started going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh geez, look at how you head on collision time right there. That's scary. And we're faster than them blue than blue cars right there. We we need to take them. Uh oh! Now he went right. He went left. We have nobody telling us which way yeah. to go. Well, I saw him come around. Okay, so I yeah. Knew he was going through and then going the other way. Okay, so here we go. This is it. This is it. Turn, is this turn it right four. Here? This is it. So look out! We just took the white flag. Oh, jeez! Oh, I have no brakes left. And bam! Oh, oh, jeez! We clipped that car too. So what happened is we had the white flag. It was the last lap, and I did see the white flag. We're coming out of turn four. I thought we was gonna take the checkered flag at that point. So at that point, I here's the in-car camera. You see, I'm just holding on to the cup holder right there. <laughs> We're coming around into turn four, and uh, bam! Yeah, it was nothing I could do. I had it turned as sharp to the left as I could. That surprised me that you turned. Because <laughs> I wasn't I thought we were gonna take the checkered flag right there. But I didn't see anything. No, now watch what happens here. I give him the thumbs up. I'm okay, but I'm just holding the brake right now. And we got this guy coming over and asking. He comes up, yeah, hey, you okay out there? I said, Yeah, I'm alright. He says, Well, can you get out? I said, No, I can't get out. <laughs> He's and like, so what, what happened? The steering wheel came up and literally pinned my head with the helmet on, pinned my helmet up. 
So I couldn't turn or do anything like this. Is oh, all watch I this. Do. Watch this. I go to putting in the park and it starts moving. And I want to go in the park and you're like, stop, stop. And I have no brakes and no transmission, no gear, windshield wipers, windshield wipers. waving for help. And I finally <laughs> shut off the key. <laughs> and that's what, what uh, got us stopped again. But then, uh, yeah, we ended up. So these fellers, then they climb up on top of the car, and I have no idea what's going on. I, I was so worried that you might be hurt or something, but but you were just pinned, huh? Yeah, I was just pinned. I mean, I wasn't hurt. So now, how did they get you unstuck? Or how uh, they... Oh, big boy there, whoever that was, he just literally grabbed hold of the steering wheel and just pulled back, and I was able to slide my head out of the head, get my helmet off. Okay. And once the helmet was off, I was able to, you know, move around. So, and then they asked us to drive it back. So yeah. I'm like, I'm driving it I like remember, this. and I remember <laughs> you saying, go slow. <laughs> now I find out, because A, your steering wheel's in a different yeah, spot. Yeah, because I was trying to steer it like this. <laughs> We should have just said, you know what, <laughs> let's just leave the car here or you just take it, push the car out of the way. We could have walked across the track out yeah, in our we manager's got car. Black but Asher. whatever, we're, we're like doing what's best for the track, right? So we're like, well, they want us to move the car. And then it, this was the most uh, scariest part of the race for me. It wasn't hitting that car. It was driving it back to the pits because at this time we had used up the brakes. Good. So here I come now. This is where I need a horn, y'all. I need to tell people, look out. I'm, I'm, I think the vi the video makes it seem we're going faster than what we really are. No, he's telling us to slow down. You're probably, I'm trying, sir. We have to make this turn. Now, I don't know how we're going to pull in and stop. With, oh, get out of the way, folks. Get out of the way. We turn it. And look at, here we come. Now, how am I going to stop? Look out, look out, look out. Oh, boom. There, that stopped the stacker car. We stopped. <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it. We brought that sacred car back in one piece and that's a victory right there considering we ain't never even been in one before. Oh, just get in that thing. You'll figure it out how to make it go just as soon as that green flag flies. Yep, that was the first time I sat in it was, I fired it up about 20 minutes beforehand and then other than that, the it's, that, that makes it fun. That makes the, the, it more fun. You know, the, the fly by the seat of your pants and just let's get in here and let's get going and just kind of see what happens. So. Yeah, I probably would have liked to have practiced it a little bit more uh, instead of just jumping in and going. It kind of like puts you at a disadvantage. Yeah. No, I'm probably, uh, I probably won't get to do any more Night of Destructions. I mean, I'm not opposed to getting back to a stack of car, but I don't think I'd get back into one where I just jump in and go. <laughs> I think that's kind of the uh, the allure of it is you know you can do something that yeah you're risking getting hurt but yeah I mean the risk is worth the reward when you go out there and you do things that normal people would be like I, I would never get in a car and go around a track I would never get in the top of a car with somebody else controlling the gas and the brake but then again I, I want to because it's fun because the, rea the reaction from the crowd yeah, uh, and that's, I think that's probably better than anything is when you jump out of that car, everybody's worried and yeah. you jump up and you just get the roar of the crowd. It's just, it makes it all worth it. It does. Once I had the accident and I, I lost my left eye, there's just too much risk there that uh, one wrong thing and I'm, I'm blind. I don't have any more spares in that department. So we've got... Uh, yeah, we just gotta kinda take a step back and let the next generation come in and, and do what they do. You know, the steering wheel pinning my head back, I, mean, I didn't really have any problems with it. That was a blast, and I can't wait to do it again. Racing with major laps have all been run. Racing with major, I we had some fun. Racing with major, we'll see you down the road. Racing Mason Dixon, go watch it next episode. Yeah, buddy, let's go racing. Yeah, 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 yeah,